Old School RuneScape has a map that is so expansive and so much content it can be really difficult to navigate for a new player. I've been playing RuneScape for almost 18 years now and still learn something new every time I play. Wow, that actually sounds pretty insane. In this video, I'm going through my bank to cover all the items that I think are must-haves or just make playing Old School RuneScape easier. Now with that being said, by the time I publish this, I will probably think of 20 more things, so if you think of something, I will pin a top comment and you can comment that item below. I'll also cover a few more tips that will probably just help you get around the game a little bit easier. This video was recommended to me by a viewer of mine, so thank you for the idea. Also, because I'm a small content creator, I do not have any sponsors, so please check out my links in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links, but it is the gear that I use to play and edit these videos. With that being said, let's jump into my bank account and see what items I have to go through. Alright guys, we're in my bank account now and we have quite a bit of items to go through, so right off the bat, let's get into my first tab here here and just kind of go through it and I'll kind of explain it. We have Ceridoman Brews and Super Restores. Now some of these items that I'm going to talk about are going to be members, some will be non-members, so just to get that out of the way, most of the stuff is going to be members. If you really want to play the game, just get members, it's totally worth it. This is a Ceridoman Brew, so this basically has four doses. If you drink three of those doses, you'll also want to drink a Super Restore, and what this does is it heals you and it increases your defense level temporarily. For every three doses of this, you drink one Restore. A Restore acts as a prayer potion, but it also restores any uh, uh, stats that were lowered. These are used basically to save inventory spots whenever you're bossing or you need food, uh, say you're at God Wars Dungeon, uh, which is a big boss in the game that a lot of people do. There's several of them. Um, and basically it just saves you spots from taking food. I keep all of my potions here. These are combat potions, stamina potions, which will help you run. If you don't know about stamina potions, these give you run energy for two minutes unless you have the Ring of Endurance on. And then I believe it's increased to four minutes or double. This is an antidote. This will protect you from poison. It'll protect you from a lot of different things. So these are all of my main potions that I use and that's why I keep them here. So enough about potions. I also have my food here. If you don't know what a caram bomb is, these are good for combo eating. So if you want to eat really fast, say you can take a mana ray and then click on the caram bomb in the same tick and you'll essentially eat two food in the tick of one eat. The other items in here are obviously runes. Now the rune pouch is very useful and these numbers are showing up on here. That's how many runes are in there only because I'm using rune light. If you're on the vanilla client, it probably won't show you those. The rune pouch can hold three different runes and now with the Tombs of a Masket update, if you end up doing that raid when you get better on in the future, as you can see, I'm not that good. Uh, I've only done the raid twice now. Um, you can unlock a fourth spot for your rune pouch. So basically that's an inventory saving item. If you didn't know, your inventory can hold 28 items. So this will save you two spots or three if you've done that raid and have unlocked the fourth spot. So this item here is Graceful. You obtain Graceful by doing Rooftop Agility. It's very useful, it makes you a lot lighter in the game, and I believe it helps you restore your run energy faster. So it's one of those items that I would get right off the bat. I would just go ahead and do Agility and knock it out and get this before you do anything else, because it's gonna make getting around the game way easier, and you wanna get those Agility levels up as quickly as possible, and it will make your life a lot easier unless you just have a lot of money and are getting staminas and uh, using those, but they're pretty expensive. And for an Iron Man, this is a definitely a must have. Now, if you see all these squares, these are called teleport tablets, and some of these are tradable, some of them are not. So you see these ones right here. Those are ones that I made myself. Now there's different requirements to make teleport tablets. Um, these are made by actually using a, uh, there's like a scroll you can get and use it on a home teleport, which is here, and you can do like custom teleports. Could be its own video in itself on how to do all that. But anyway, just know that these are teleport tablets, and basically you click them. You don't have to have the magic level to actually go there, so I could give this Varrock teleport to a brand new player. They could click on it, and it would teleport them from Lumbridge to Varrock. So it's just a faster way of getting around the game. Or say you're on the normal spellbook, and you uh, switch to Ancients. Well, now you don't have a Varrock teleport, so you could carry this in your inventory and you could switch over and teleport to Varrock while you're on an ancient spellbook. Now this is a Lunar Teleport tablet, that's why it looks different, and there's different ones for different things. This right here is a Master Scroll Book. This can carry teleport scrolls, and this also can teleport you to Watson. Now you get Watson teleports by using one of these, uh, I think with a knife or something, I can't remember exactly. You get um, teleport scrolls, 
you can add them to that. Teleport to Watson, and if you have one of each clue scroll, not including the beginner scroll, give all those to Watson, and he will give you a master clue scroll. So this is very useful to have. Now, I don't know why I have a sea turtle here, so ignore that. But this right here is an ectophile, and this right here is a royal seed pod. Now, both of these items are obtained from a quest, but they are very quick teleports, and they're also free to obtain from the... Uh, NPC that the quest is related to so this one being something with the tree village or tree gnome village or something It's been a long time and this one is from somewhere around the animal magnetism series of quests uh, It's been years and years since I've done these quests. So forgive me basically if you go into the wilderness per se um, these can teleport you out really quickly and it doesn't cost anything. This one can teleport you, I believe, at level 30 wilderness and below. This one is probably level 20 and below. But basically a free, quick teleport um, to get out of a bad situation. So that's everything I can see on the first page. Let's go ahead and go over here to the second tab. So you'll have to forgive my bank account. I know it's not the most organized. I wish I had a better setup for it. But we're going to go through this. These items at the top are items that I use pretty frequently. Now, as a new player, you won't be using hardly any of these for quite some time. I'm just going to go over the most essential items that right off the bat you can probably obtain. And I'll still cover some of these because they are really good items to have, at least in the future. So the very first item I see here is Borrow's Gloves. Now, you get these from the recipe for Disaster Quest. And it's a pretty long quest, but these gloves are well worth it. They're pretty much the best all-round gloves you can have for combat in the game. It's really just a must-have. Same goes for the fire cape you obtain by killing Jad. Until you get there, you can wear an obsidian cape, but this is one of the best melee capes in the game. Actually, it is the best next to the infernal cape, so you really want to get that. This item is called Ava's Assembler, or Ava's Accumulator, as you can see here, which you'll first obtain. This item is really good because as you upgrade it, it picks up higher and higher level arrows so you don't have to continue picking them up off the ground. These items are Slayer Helmets and these increase your damage while you're on a Slayer task killing that monster in particular. They are definitely a must have and they look really cool to boot. The next item is a blessing. Now this is Rada's blessing which you can obtain from doing achievement diaries which the rest of these items are. I'm not going to go over any more achievement diary items. Just know that you should definitely do your achievement diaries and you will also get XP lamps as well as all the rewards that come with the achievement diary items such as the Falador shield which can recharge your prayer. I think it's two or three times a day and if you have 99 prayer like me that can save you quite a bit of money over time. The Explorer's Ring, which has high Alex, it has 30 per in-game day, can teleport you. Kramdragov's 4 can give you double tickets from Brimhaven Agility Course. It can teleport you to your Slayer Master. All of the diary items are must-haves, and I would knock them out as soon as possible. And personally, I would use the XP on Agility. As the new RC minigame has made runecrafting much easier, uh, Agility is by far the most time-consuming skill besides runecrafting or Slayer, so I would personally use it on Agility unless you just really like Agility, in which case I would use it on runecrafting. The blessing is important, however, though, and you can buy different ones. As you can see down here, there's an Unholy Blessing, Honorable Blessing. The reason there's different ones is because at God Wars, depending on which one you wear, certain monsters won't attack you. Nevertheless, this item gives you a prayer boost, and if you're not using arrows or bolts or whatever, it goes in that slot, and I would definitely use one. It'll make your prayer drain much slower, in addition to the teleport capabilities that the Rada's Blessing has. The next item is the Fighter Torso. You can get this from Barbarian Assault. And basically, the item from the minigame acts as a Bando's chestplate minus the defense bonuses, but it gives you the same strength bonus. So if you combine that with Bando's test sets, you're essentially wearing the set minus all the defensive bonuses. And in my opinion, it looks really sweet. And it's just one of those nostalgic items that I really love. These items are more graceful items, so just the same as the blue items on my first tab. These are just extra ones I have. But just note that you can get different colors of graceful and you can have multiple sets. The Shazian armor is used for killing wizardmen, which drop the Dragon Warhammer, so if you're an Iron Man, you really need these to be able to kill the Wizardman Shamans. Before you get Graceful, you can go ahead and get a pair of Boots of Lightness. Get this item, it's totally free, and you can do it basically right off the bat with a few items. This will reduce your weight slightly. I don't know how much it actually will help you, but if you're doing agility and you're trying to train um, initially, I would go ahead and grab a pair of those. Now, all of these books do different things. This is from the Whore from the Deep Quest, and basically they give you different bonuses. I don't remember which one does which to be exact because I don't really use them anymore. The 
only one I really use is the Book of Darkness, which definitely gives you a magic bonus in the shield slot. I would recommend doing the Horror from the Deep quest, A, because it's a pretty good quest, and B, because you'll get these, and at a lower level, these are definitely pretty useful. The Articulic 4, this is another diary item, very good, it's I think the best or second best cloak in the game for prayer bonus. The Fremenic Sea Boots are amazing. They can teleport you to the Fremenic area, which has a lot of benefits. The last ones, unfortunately, are going to be for your higher level players. Definitely worth it. The Kandoran Headgear, which can teleport you to a guy for the Master Clue Steps. Varric Armor, all of it, I'm telling you, do your diaries, it's totally worth it. Now this item and this item are defenders, so you have a Rune Defender, Dragon Defender, and at the top I have an Avernic Defender. Defenders come from the Warrior's Guild, if you need to get there you can use a combat bracelet and teleport there. It's extremely good, it's going to be your best really offensive melee combat weapon, or offhand combat weapon, and you'll want to get that from the start. There's not a guide out there for one, maybe I'll make one in the future on how to get the Defender. It's not really a complex process, but there's definitely better ways to go about it than what you might think of as a new player. If I don't have a guide out at the moment, which I won't when this video is released, then go ahead and look you up a guide on how to get a defender in old school runescape and trust me it is totally worth it. So this is a cannonball and this is the cannon set. Now I would definitely recommend doing the dwarf cannon quest right off the bat if you can and you have the money to do this when you're doing slayer. It will help you immensely in leveling up your range and your slayer at the same time. So you could train melee, you could train range, you could train your slayer, and if you have like a bone crusher necklace or whatever, you can also get some prayer XP. So you can really quadruple your XP from the start if you're using a cannon and doing all these other steps. The next item here is a holy wrench. You can get that from a quest. I don't remember which one. It essentially acts as a, a prayer cape or the prayer cape perk. Say you drink a prayer potion, this will make that prayer potion give you a few more points, which in turn saves you a ton of money over time. All you have to do is have it in your inventory. You can just drag it to the bottom of your bag and not worry about it. Now, the next item is a bunch of jewelry. I will go over the jewelry stuff when we get to the player owned house section of this video because essentially it can all be covered there. The next items are skilling outfits. Now some skilling outfits are worth it, some are not so much. You just kind of have to weigh whether or not taking the time to get the skilling outfit is worth the amount of XP you could be getting if you were doing something else within the skill. So say the to obtain the fishing outfit, maybe it's more beneficial for you to just go and camp at Driftnet fishing or barbarian fishing versus trying to take the time to obtain this outfit because it is very time consuming. As you can see, I don't have all the carpenter outfit, which is for construction. That came out when I was already in my level 90s for construction. So for me, I did it a little bit. Getting 200k XP an hour doing uh, mahogany homes for this construction outfit isn't really worth it to me anymore because the amount of time I spent on that, I could be getting eight or 900,000 experience per hour doing other methods in my player owned house for construction. XP. With these, you kind of have to weigh whether or not it's worth it to get the outfits. I would say the angler outfit, definitely the lumberjack outfit, and runecrafting, FM, those are definitely worth it. The other ones are kind of hit or miss. It really just depends on what you like to do, and you just kind of have to weigh whether or not that is worth it for you. The next item is cooking gauntlets. I would definitely recommend that as you're training your cooking. This will increase your cooking level. You get these items from a quest, same as the chaos and the ice and goldsmith gauntlets. Really, the cooking gauntlets are the most essential ones, and the goldsmithing gauntlets, which gives you, I think it gives you more XP or something whenever you're doing goldsmithing. So if you're doing blast furnace, you can get a ton, like two or 300,000 XP per hour doing goldsmithing, which is relatively expensive, but is a very fast smithing XP. So I'm not gonna cover much on this page. This is all of my potions. And yes, it's slightly disorganized. <laughs> I literally just have them one through four dose. That way, if I'm using something, these are my essential potions. And then everything else, if it's not four dose, goes back into here. And then if you didn't know, you can take out all these in notes so say I have this super combat and if I had a super combat 3 I could take them out in note form and then I could take them to the guy at the grand exchange with a little herb war icon and click right click on decant and he will actually turn all those into four dose or whatever dose you want and he only charges if you go from under four dose so if you're converting a bunch of like one two and three dose potions to four dose he doesn't charge you anything and he actually notes all your vials for you so if you're taking all these and like manually you know dumping one dose into two dose to make a three dose 
don't do that. I used to do that. It's time consuming and it's not worth it. You can get him to decant those. Also, that goes for jewelry. If you go to, I think it's the guy with the rune icon, if you have noted jewelry, so say I have a ring of doing three and ring of doing you know, or seven or whatever, I can take those out in noted form like these and I can decant them into slayering eights or whatever. So that's something else you can do. Just a little extra tip there. The next item is the barbarian rod. You'll need this for barbarian fishing, which will get you strength XP. It'll get you fishing XP and it will get you agility XP all at the same time. If you don't know about barbarian fishing, watch a guide on that and it will be a great thing for you. Now, if you're looking at getting hunter XP and fishing XP, I would prefer you do drift net fishing it's pretty boring and it's very quick intensive but you get essentially at my level which is 90 plus i get probably 70 to 100 000 of both xp and hunter and fishing per hour it's really up to you and what you want to train barbarian fishing is really good for new players right off the bat because it does train three skills at once the next item is going to be a little bit further on in your future but the infernal axe it's a little expensive and fm's pretty easy to train but if you're like me and you're trying to mac this is like a must-have item it trains your wood cutting and it burn some of the logs simultaneously so I prefer to do teaks with this or redwoods and basically it burns quite a bit of the logs for FM XP so you don't have to drop them so you still have to drop them you just don't have to drop as frequently and you get the extra FM XP so it's kind of one of those like no-brainers if you have the extra money the other item is the crystal pickaxe once again this is way off in the future probably for you the crystal pickaxe just makes mining a little bit faster I think it's an extra tick faster Pharaoh scepter is pretty expensive but it can teleport you all around the desert and it's kind of of an overpowered item not really overpowered because there's not traveling the desert is just very annoying in this game but if you have the extra money grab you a pharaoh scepter and get it charged up you can charge it at the mummy within the pyramid plunder mini game and you can take him noted items so noted gold items is the best thing to do you can take him just a few of those and he'll exchange those for charges and now with the tombs of a masket update it can hold way more charges than before the strange old lockpick has a few uses but the most common one it's going to be used for is borrows which is a mini game to obtain different kinds of armor some of the best armor in the game really the way it works is it gets you through doors that would typically not you wouldn't be able to open the crystal saw boosts your construction level now it can't be used on anything except for items that need a saw so if you're trying to boost something that doesn't need a saw in construction this won't help you the mcando hammer is a pretty cool item i just like the way it looks and honestly obtaining it was pretty fun even though i was falsely banned right after i got it thinking it was just a temporary ban it's a cool item to have and it just takes up one less inventory spot and i'm sure there's some other uses for it right now i just prefer to use it over anything else because i haven't seen a lot of players with it and it's like I said, it was just fun to obtain. If you're using Runelite, I would recommend you set up a quick tab for your butterfly net and impling jar. That way, if you see a crazy rare impling and you have the hunter level for it, you can catch it. Just like as I'm filming this video, I saw a magpie impling flying around behind the bank and that was the free 20K. So if you see a dragon impling, I think those are like two to 500K at times. So I would hate for you to not see one of those and or see one and not be able to catch it really quickly. Get you one of those. And uh, if you ever want to just have some fun, go to Xan and go to the impling area and you can catch implings it's pretty fun when the expensive ones pop up there are a lot of bots there you have to compete with but whenever I'm bored every now and then I'll go out there and I just think it's kind of fun to go catch implings and they're pretty valuable you can actually make a ton of money doing it or if you're like me and trying to do all the master clues you can I trade them in for master clues so it's just a fun way to do something different this is a clue box so if you're doing a clue scroll get one of these and put it in your inventory and it will protect you if you go in the wilderness and say you get killed you won't lose your cool scroll and i think if you have the treasure chest in your inventory it might protect that as well do your research on that i can't verify the last part but i do believe that's true so next we'll go over the few skill capes that i do have so the farming cape is useful because it can teleport you to the farming guild obviously you're probably not going to have that off the bat and you're already going to know about that if you have it the quest cape is great because it it can teleport you to a fairy ring now, if you have a high construction level, you can put a fairy ring in your house, so that's kind of obsolete, but it could be useful. It also teleports you next to the Legends Guild. The music cape is fantastic if you're doing master quiz 
like me because it can teleport you to follow the bard which is a common clue step in master clues the hit points cape can act as double hp so if you're doing a skill like agility at brimhaven you can wear this and not really have to worry about food the magic cape can do five spellbook swaps per day so you can swap to any spellbook you have available the prayer cape acts as the holy wrench so if you don't have that holy wrench in your inventory you can bring a prayer cape and it will act as that holy wrench the ranging cape acts as an accumulator so it's really not that great i guess if you want the defensive bonuses and still want the effects of the accumulator if it had the assembler bonus it would be much better but i don't believe it does it's not really use that often if you have the assembler. The gym bag is fantastic for Slayer and in combination with the herb sack. I bring both of these items when I'm doing Slayer. This is my Slayer tab, so these are items that I commonly use during Slayer. And basically you just keep those open in your inventory. And if you get herbs or gems, you can pick them up and they'll go straight in that bag. And they can hold quite a bit, so you don't really have to worry about running out of inventory space. I have a lot of buckets of sand in here because I've done the hand in the sand quest. But if you do the hand in the sand quest, you will automatically have buckets of sand delivered to your bank after you talk to Bert from completion of the quest and over time those add up in value. Now this is a colossal rune pouch but you get multiple rune pouches from the abyss by killing creatures and those rune pouches eventually can be combined with the I think it's called the abyssal needle from the new rune crafting mini game and those can be combined to hold more essence so you can make more runes. Very useful. Next item is the plank sack which you get from the mahogany homes mini game. Now this is nice for doing construction it allows you to hold more planks so it's a pretty nice thing to have. This is a Dorvan rock cake. If you ever see people that are lowering their health so that they can use Durox to hit higher, this is a good item for that. You can do it pretty quickly. This is the Oculus Orb, which is actually the item that I used to film the very beginning of this video. If you didn't know, you can kind of hover around the game with it, and I think you can get it in Draenor Village from one of the people there. This is a key ring. No, I don't remember how you get this. I'm sure it's a quest item, but you can store a lot of the keys in RuneScape on this key ring. I don't know how many I have on there, but there's a ton and it'll just basically keep your bank a little more organized not that mine is great but if you're looking for a key you can just grab that and take it with you or get the key off of it and then put it back up very useful item to have ecumenical keys are used for God Wars dungeon. So normally you need a kill count of 40 to get into a God Wars boss room. If you go in the wilderness and you go to the God Wars area, now it's not actually God Wars dungeon, but it has the creatures from it. You can kill implings or really any creature in there. The implings are just the lowest level ones. And there's a certain chance to get these keys. Now the amount of keys you can have varies on, I think your achievement diary. I think you can hold up to five if you have like all the wilderness achievement diaries done. Uh, I just have three in here right now. You can use those to quickly access a God Wars dungeon room. So say you want to go to Bandos, you can totally skip getting 40 kill count and just use that key on the door and walk right in. Very useful item to have. The last item I'll cover in my bank is the magic whatever that is I can't say it I'm not even gonna try I usually keep this at the dwarf so if you didn't know the little or the little gnomes that walk around the garden patches they can store buckets they can store all kinds of things they can actually note herbs so if you're farming and you click on an herb or something that you've grown you can actually use it on the dwarf and he will note them for you I didn't know that for a long time I think I already had 99 farming and I did not know that there's just things that no one really talks about and it'll make the game a lot easier um, the magic whatever they're called, they actually give you more herbs whenever you, or more of whatever you're harvesting, whenever you equip those, you get them from a quest. Now some of the last things I'm gonna cover here is teleportation around the game to make it a little bit easier for you. Now if you go here and you go to filters, you can obviously filter out these. We're going to leave these here on real quick and I'm just gonna show you something. So if I go in here and grab my room pouch, if you notice when I click on the Varrock teleport, it actually takes me to the exchange. Now, this may not seem like a big deal, but if you're wondering how I did that, you can actually change. So I can configure which teleport this goes to. So now if I change it to Varrock and I click on it, it takes me to Varrock Square. Now, this also works for the Camelot teleport. If you see that I click on it, it takes me directly to Sears Village. And if I configure it, I can change it to Camelot. Same for the Watchtower. I can also go to Yenil as my first option. Now the way I'm doing this is, I believe achievement diaries, some of them may be quest related, but just check um, all these. I don't actually, there's probably more that I don't know about, 
but just know that that is an option. I believe the Varrock one is from the Achievement Diaries for sure, but it's just a useful tip that you may not know about unless you just happen to accidentally click that and you're like, hey, what does that do? So now let's go to our player-owned house. So the player-owned house is probably the most overpowered thing in the game, and I hope it never changes. If you're an Iron Man, you can store different clothing and items in here. You can get tools and things from the shelf if you need it. You can paint your armor, which always seemed like a cool thing when I was younger. One of the biggest benefits is being able to quickly repair your Borrow's items. So if you didn't know, Borrow's armor will degrade and you can actually use it on an armor repair stand with money in your inventory and you can repair that armor for, at a discount and you get smithing XP. Now the other most useful benefits of your player owned house is this teleport ornate jewelry box. Now this will basically give you all the jewelry to teleport quickly around the game and you can either press the number or click on it. You see this is champions guild and if i were to press a right now it, it would teleport me there or nine for warriors guild so you can kind of see it basically incorporates all of your jewelry into one box and you can quickly teleport with it the other thing is the last option you use will be a right click option so you can see i went to the warriors guild last so that's the option on there the next thing is the altar and you can quickly change your spell book to different spells and you can do this as many times as you want it's totally unlimited also there's a cape rack so if i have the quest cape there i can actually teleport with it or any of these other options and then by far probably the most overpowered thing is the ornate pool of rejuvenation now this pool is fantastic if i use my prayer right now or anything else if any of my stats are drained, I can drink this pool and I can do it as many times as I want and it will heal everything. This is probably the best setup to have in your player own house because I can teleport into my home, drink from that pool, run right over here and say if I'm doing Corporal Beast, I can quickly teleport to Corp again right from there. So probably one of the best things to have in your house. You also have all the options to teleport different places from here. So if we go to the teleport menu on the portal nexus, this is a very fast teleport. So rather than being like some kind of delay, I can set any of these to be over here. And it also has a scry mode so you can see like around the game, but you can quickly teleport without any like animation. So it's a very fast way to teleport. And then you have your regular portals. So these just take you different places in the game. So I have a borrows one there. So say I'm doing the borrows mini game, I can teleport home and then just run right over there and it takes me right back and I don't have to use borrows teleport tablets. Corrin is a great one to have because of Slayer and the Winter Isle teleport is also great for Slayer. I also have the Fairy Ring, which can take you different places around the game and the Wilderness Obelisk, which is fantastic if you have the diaries done because you can set your destination on there and teleport anywhere. And then you have the Combat Dummy, which you can attach and you can actually test your max hit on this. So you can see right now I'll hit 11. If I turn on Pidey, you can see that I'll hit a 13. That's going to be all the items from my bank account, guys, that will help you to get through old school RuneScape a little bit easier. I hope that it helped. I know this video is probably going to end up being pretty long by the time I edit it and get it uploaded, but I think it will help some of you new players if you didn't know about some items or some things to get around the game easier or items that will help you out. Anyway, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up so other new players can find it. Leave a comment below on an item that maybe you didn't know about and let me know if it did help you. Like, tell me something. Uh, maybe that you didn't know that you saw in this video and if you see something that you know about that I didn't cover in this video leave it in the pinned comment above and let me know I'm just curious to see what you guys think anyway that's going to be all guys I appreciate you watching my video and I'll see you in the next one